here are some things you might not be considering about RFK Jr.'s pick in Nicole Sheeney. So one thing that I'm keeping in mind is that it would be political assassination for almost anybody who's already a very well-established or beloved politician. This would be people like Tulsi or Rand Paul. I know those were my two top picks, but I think he asked both of them and they both said no. So if you imagine like, going against duopoly into a third party, leaving whatever potentials you had behind, like Rand Paul's doing a great job as a senator, and he's got that cushy job. Tulsi, she's holding out for Trump, and she said no to RFK. So as much as a lot of us would have wanted her, she said no. So she's unfortunately holding out for Trump, and he may or may not pick her. So she may regret her decision if he goes with someone like Vivek, which is somewhat likely. So anyways, that's one thing to consider with Nicole Shanahan. Another thing is that uh, she is an elite, I guess you could say in some regards now, but she grew up in poverty. So she actually really gets the plight of working class Americans. Her mom was a Chinese immigrant, is an immigrant from China, and her dad was an addict, and they grew up on food stamps. And she even got choked up in the speech talking about it, how hard that was growing up like that. So I don't think that she just magically became a millionaire. She went to school, she worked hard, she was an athlete, she became a lawyer, and from what I've read, she already had money before she met the Google guy. So it's not like she's just some nobody who all of a sudden met the Google guy and now is a powerful elite donating to Democratic organizations. And about her being Democrat, well, a lot of people were Democrat. I was a Democrat, RFK was Democrat, Trump was a Democrat. Uh, a lot of people were Democrats and they left the party. And that's kind of what RFK's whole shtick is, is that his values are traditional Democrat values, which are nothing like the current Democratic Party. So I don't think it's a problem that she was Democrat. Uh, I know she has a lot of money and that she's giving money to Democratic causes and some people are saying like this DA that Soros backed. That's a little unsettling to me, but uh, I think people learn, you know, they change their minds. I mean, I myself used to be extremely liberal. I hated my, my conservatism my family growing up in Texas, and I was just like, oh, conservatives, Ooh, Trump. You know, I, I, I went and marched in the pussy hat parade when Trump became president, and a lot of us ended up leaving. Like, I was in California. I, I left the Democratic Party because of the way they were having such a stronghold on people's medical freedoms. And that brings me to another thing about Nicole, is that she is a mom. So she's a mom who's fighting for freedom, for families and for children. She has a vaccine-injured child. So she understands what it's like to struggle and have the pain of that situation. So uh, she stood up against that and, and I think she's just waking up. Like, I was probably a similar age as her when I started looking to the evils, or I mean, that's a strong word, but just the greed and power of the Democratic Party principles now. And it's, it's sad, just like it was sad for Kennedy to have to leave the Democratic Party. So I imagine that for someone like Nicole, she was probably idealistic and maybe her some of the the good ideas seemingly that the World Economic Forum has but didn't really understand the depths of it and I think probably now that she's uh, realized 
how important freedom is based on the injury of her child. And she's probably done a 180 on a lot of things. Uh, I know that was the case for me. So it's there's there's a lot to consider, and I think it, it behooves us to not jump to conclusions, not be like crazy conspiracy theorists around you know her choice. I think he he asked a lot of people, and they said no because of the political reasons. And she's like he said, she's willing to get out there and face the ridicule and dump a bunch of money into it, which the campaign needs money. The ballot access issue is real, and we'll need money to, to go out and collect signatures. It's, it's no joke. So I think it's great that she has money. And, and from watching her speech, I can tell she has a very kind heart, and she wants to put her money to good use. And she's willing to take the risk to, to step out with him and weren't. A lot of our beloved, you know, politician heroes that were maybe a little bit more glamorous and exciting, they weren't willing, and she is. So uh, she's smart. She's got that tech knowledge that I think is, is is really good to consider when it comes to AI and tech censorship and everything. So I see why he picked her, and, and you know, she's really dedicated to health of our country, which is it's huge, and that's all in alignment with him and, and my values also. So I'm excited to see what comes. I think that she's going to get some training on speaking a little bit more confidently. You can tell she was probably extremely nervous, and uh, this, you know, this is a new thing for her. She's fresh, and I think that's great. And she's going to get stronger, and we're going to know her more. And, uh, yeah, I mean, she's already strong in her actions. I think just she'll, she'll come across with more, like, confidence and oomph as she gets more used to, to making the circuits and talking to people. And, yeah, I think it's a great choice. And it's what we need to do to move forward and get out of this duopoly and get him on the ballot. And, uh, get our next awesome president of the United States to make really, really important changes.